Hey everybody, thanks for tuning back in to Building 46. Back with another shorter format video. I'm flying solo again today. Uh, today we're gonna focus on something that's been touched on in the past but never really focused on, and that is pouring. A lot of times you're gonna assume that the bartender's gonna pour the beer, but if you have packaged beers, uh, cans and bottles, they're gonna be poured by your server most likely. So we really want to focus on that and make sure that no matter what your package option is, style, glassware option, that you're gonna be enhancing the guest experience. Uh, we're also really excited to feature a new glassware supplier. That's Bormioli Rocco from Italy. They've got nine plants, over 2,200 employees, and you might be familiar with the brand through their sole importer in the U.S. for the hospitality industry, and that's Steelite. Uh, really high quality glassware. Three of the four that we're featuring today are from Bormioli Rocco. So to start, we're gonna go with uh, just a stout, and this is an ale glass. Um, it's called the Ale Beer Glass, and that's from Bormioli Rocco. 14.25 ounces. So you'll leave a little bit of extra room for head with this one. Um, and for the beer, we just have Terrapins Muhu. It's a great stout. It's a milk stout, as you can tell from the name. And that's just going to be a normal pour, what most servers feel comfortable doing. And as we go down the line, we're going to get into a little bit hairier situations. Uh, the second one would be Citrus Sunshine Slacker from Evil Twin Brewing. Uh, this is a cool, uh, like, gypsy brew, well, a contract brewer in New York, but he brews all over the place. This is a cool session IPA. But the cool thing about this situation is we have the executive beer glass from Bormioli Rocco. It only accommodates 13 and a quarter ounces, but this beer only comes in a tall boy, a 16 ounce can. So in this situation, we're gonna have to go over uh, pouring the, the, to fill the glass, and then you're gonna have to leave the remainder at the table and your servers are going to have to know to pick that up in a timely manner to not rush the guest but to uh, leave them with the can so you're not taking any of their beer away from them. Uh, next one is actually one from Libby. Uh, we've touched on this before. Really high quality glass. This is a wheat beer glass. It's a 16 ounce glass from Libby. And with this uh, we're looking at the Hitachino Nest White Ale from Kiyoichi Brewery in Japan. One of the best white ales that I've ever had, but with a lot of Belgian whites, um, German Hefeweizens, any wheat beer that's unfiltered really, you're going to have to roll the bottle a little bit. And this stirs up the sediment and a lot of the settled solids at the bottom of the uh, bottle. And that's what you're looking for in a wheat beer. You want some of that cloudiness in your glass. So you're going to have to roll like so before you pour. Lastly, we've got uh, the Abbey Beer Glass. This is from Bormioli Rocco. It accommodates 15 and a quarter ounces, which is going to be a little bit less than this beer, La Grave from Trogues. But what's interesting about this beer is that it's actually bottle conditioned. So there's yeast in the bottle. It's still uh, fermenting, and that's why it's got a cork and cage top. For a beer like this, you're really going to have to advise your uh, staff to be very gentle with a pour. You can easily create a huge mess on the table, which is obviously the opposite of what we want to do. We want to enhance the guest experience and we want to keep everybody happy, so you're going to have to be very gentle with this pour. All right, so we're going to be focusing on each of these pours individually. And again, we're starting with the Muhu from Terrapin. And this is a glass from Bormioli Rocco. Again, imported by Steelite for the hospitality industry. This is the Ale Beer Glass, 14 and a quarter ounce. It's got a nice stem, solid base, nice bottom here, nice big bulge right here, and then tightens up into a nice, uh, a nice slightly extended lip. Feels pretty sturdy, but also uh, pretty elegant looking. Again, the beer is a milk stout. I, I wanted to go with a beer that maybe, you know, any, any bar could have, a nice sweet stout. Um, and basically when you're pouring, 
you want to hold it, you want your servers to hold it right about, um, like just have the elbows at about 90 degrees here. Uh, you don't have to hold it in the guest's face and you don't want to do it too low or away from them. Make sure that they can see what you're doing. Gradual and steady, you don't want to go too slow and you don't want to go too fast. I'm tilt the glass up because as we said this is 12 ounces of beer in a 14.25 ounce glass so we're gonna have to fill this up with a little bit of head and I've been a fan of this beer for a while it's just got an excellent nose very chocolatey as you might imagine Slightly thicker, creamier body. And obviously, looks beautiful in the glass. You can see good glassware and good beer. You're going to see a little bit of lacing here. And that'll travel all the way down the glass. You'll see what each sip was. So, really good looking presentation for this beer and this glass. Great combination. So next we've got a slightly more difficult situation for your staff. We've got a beer in a 16 ounce can. In this case, it's Evil Twins Citra Sunshine Slacker. And we've got a 13 and a quarter ounce glass. This is from Bormioli Rocco again. And it's a great shape for an IPA, or in this case, a session IPA. But unfortunately, this glass is not gonna house all of this beer. Proper etiquette in this situation would again be to bring the beer table side and open it and pour it for the guest. But in this situation, you're simply not going to get all the beer into the glass. So proper etiquette is to leave the can or bottle, if it's a bottle, with the guest. So we can pour the beer, set it down, leave the package with the guest, and your servers or server or bartender is going to have to check in and make sure that that can or bottle doesn't sit with the guest too long, but you don't want to take it away and take away half their beer either. Again, this is a session IPA, so I like a nice tulip for any hoppy beer. Uh, beautiful thick white head on this one. Slightly cloudy, uh, possibly from dry hopping, probably with citra hops as the name implies. It's got a really nice almost lemony nose. Nice medium body. Very refreshing, bright, sort of spritzy. Uh, your guest is not going to have any problem <laughs> knocking this out and refilling it on their own. They'll probably be done quicker than you'd expect. All right, so next up we have beer and appropriate glassware. We've got a white ale. It's the Hidachino Nest White Ale from Kiyoichi Brewery in Japan. And then we've got the wheat beer glass from Libby, 16 ounce offering. And it's perfect for your Hefeweizens, Belgian Whites, and the like. Um, very great shape. We've gone over this glass before. It's got a nice thin body. And then closer to the top, it tulips out and then tightens in right around the lip. It's a classic shape, and it really is synonymous with wheat beers. But when pouring a wheat beer that's unfiltered from a bottle, there's one thing that uh, some servers might forget to do if they aren't aware. And that's because everything is sort of, that's unfiltered, all the solids have sort of fallen to the bottom. You're gonna wanna roll the bottle, as they say. So some people will do this table side in their hand. Some people will actually use the table or bar. And you don't want to go too hard on this. You want to be, you know, still kind of gentle because 
if you agitate it too much, obviously there's going to be a little bit of uh, <laughs> activity <laughs> when you open the beer. But in this case, it's totally fine. You're going to pour the beer and you pour about uh, two thirds to three quarters. And this is when they suggest that you roll the beer again. If there's anything that's been riled from the bottom during the pouring process, you're going to grab up even more of it. And again, in unfiltered styles, a lot of the appeal of the view of the beer is this cloudiness. So as you'll see, down at the bottom, you know, a lot of light is passing through. It's not particularly clear, uh, but then as you get up top, you see that beautiful color. Uh, it gets a little bit deeper and more rich, and you can really see it. It's really quite cloudy in there, which again is what we're looking for in an unfiltered wheat beer. Tons of orange coriander. Uh, this is, you know, a, a white ale in the Belgian tradition. So you're getting a lot of citrus, a lot of spice. And that's, uh, there, there's really very few beers more refreshing than this one. It's a great example of the style and the style is just excellent for something lighter uh, great for warmer weather. Cool. Dude, this beer is way better than I remembered. It's... So lastly, and I've saved the best for last as far as uh, difficulty, <laughs> we have Trogues Le Grave, which is a Belgian triple. And you'll notice that this one doesn't have a bottle cap. It's got a cork and cage. This beer is bottle conditioned. So any uh, unfiltered, bottle conditioned, Belgian style ale, there's going to be yeast in the bottle, which is pressurizing the bottle. So not only is the opening process different, but the pouring process is different as well. This is going to be a very active beer. And you're going to have to exercise a lot of restraint in the pouring speed. This is the Abbey Beer Glass from Bormioli Rocco. It's a 15 and a quarter ounce glass, a very traditional classic shape for Belgian ales. I've been to a few Belgian beer bars and this sort of, you know, very flat base, thick stem, nice wide, almost uh, like chalice like shape is really popular because it's steeped in tradition. So when you're opening a beer like this, you're gonna to have to get the cage off first. This would all be done table side. I would suggest for any server to sit the beer on the table, slowly untwist and remove the cage. Then next, you've got the cork. And your server's gonna to have to be careful with this. It might even take me a little while. You wanna be really gentle, slowly, Twist it out. And just like wine, I'd suggest leaving the cork on the table for your guest. As I said, this beer can cause you some troubles if you're too aggressive with it. So you want a nice slow pour. Some people would see, oh, it's it's not heading up too much. I'll, I'll pour it a little quicker. I just want to go nice and slow. Another reason why you want to go slow is the opposite situation of the last beer we poured. So I'm going to leave a little bit in the, in the uh, bottle here. We've basically filled the glass. And you can leave this bottle with your guests. There's just enough, just right at the bottom. And some fans of Belgian styles or bottle-conditioned beers 
Wipe Toronto up the bottom. It's, it's yeast and sediment, there's some solids. But traditionally, the server or bartender's job is to pour the beer without riling any of the sediment from the bottom. So you'd leave the corking cage and the bottle with the guest. And you have a nice full glass here. And that may be enough for them. You can stop by and take this away your next stop at the table. But some people like to rile up what's in there and pour it in. That's personal preference. Uh, it's healthy, it's safe to drink, but not everybody wants it in their glass, so be sure to avoid it on the initial pour. As you can see, this one's got just a beautiful golden color. Uh, this is just a classic style, uh, the Belgian triple. Super fruity, and it's almost a little sharp because it is a little bit higher in alcohol content. Fruity, spicy, slightly floral. And all the work from that pour pays off because you've got this highly effervescent, very light, super carbonated body. It's this combination of high alcohol content and a refreshing flavor and mouthfeel, which is just excellent. So to conclude, we went over several different beer and glassware combinations and showed you that different beer styles will coincide with different pour styles and table etiquette really is important with your guest experience. Each beer requires a slightly different pour as well as different glassware to accompany it. We wanna thank Bormioli Rocco for giving us this glassware. It was sent over by Steelite. You know, we've, we've featured a lot of great glassware in the past and we're excited to add this glassware into our portfolio of featured stuff. Uh, if you wanna email me questions, comments, beer suggestions, send an email to ross at tabletopjournal.com or for social media, you can check out Building 46 on Instagram and Twitter, it's BLDG46. As always, remember, tabletop matters. Cheers. <laughs>